Hello everybody and welcome to Yeshua Network. Today is the day, right now is the hour, plus nine minutes. We're a little late, little technical difficulties as is usual, but if you're normally tuning in with us, you already know that that yeah. happens quite often. But you know what? What's really awesome is we are working out those issues and we are improving our production here at Yeshua Network. Um, we are very excited about what is coming and what we're working on. And another series was mentioned, but we will talk about that in other videos. If you actually saw the other video that talks about it, I think on the timeline at Yeshua Network, it'd be the video right before this one. So anyways, I'm Nathan Wheeler. I'm Alex Lovovsky, and we're happy to be back with you guys here on the entire Bible read through. By the way, you guys have been doing an amazing job. Absolutely. Your research, your questions, your comments. I mean, it's like next level. It's so awesome to see how this has become uh, exactly, exactly what I could only ever pray and hope for it to be. Amen. So, Likewise. yeah. So, yeah, we had Listen, a little false You need to relax. Start. You need to relax. Am I, am I, yeah, am I, this is just an entire Bible read through. You don't need to get crazy. Okay? Am, am I too you're, uppity? You're out of control right now. <laughs> I'm you, about to fall asleep. What? How what? Can, what? The Lord is Woo! like. I, I am relaxed. I'm super relaxed. 309, you're early. Ha 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 ha. Oh, Jeff Vader's getting a little sassy. <laughs> Sass monger, little Jeff Wait, Vader. 309, Listen, you must be at the, uh, which time zone would that be? Central? I don't know, but he's talking about our time. I know. I, no, we're 109. Whatever. No, he's talking about how we're always late. Yeah. It's okay, Jeff. I will explain your jokes. Ready? Dun dun dun. <laughs> okay. Anyways, you guys, we see you're logging on while we're busting the dumb jokes, getting everything rocking and ready, getting the Holy Spirit flowing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo. Uh, all right, you know what we're going to do today? Because this, there's been a lot of spiritual warfare. We're going to pray real quick with you fine folks and ask for the Holy Spirit to come into you. Ask the Holy Spirit to come on to anybody who's watching this video at any time. By the way, God is not limited by our time, by the way, you know, the sun moves and all that. So no matter when you watch this, may this prayer be a blessing onto you. May the Holy Spirit reach you. You good? Good. Awesome. Go for it, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Almighty Yahweh, we thank you so much for this blessed day. We thank you so much for this entire Bible read-through series. It has blessed me and Alex beyond measure, and we pray that it would bless the people who are participating with us. Lord, first and foremost, I actually want to thank you for the people who have continually supported this channel, continually supported us, and been a very active uh, contri contribution to this series. It would not exist without them, and we would not be as blessed as we are with their wisdom and, and knowledge and open-mindedness and, and perspectives as you have blessed each one, Lord. For those, Lord, who are watching live today, will you please just allow the Holy Spirit to connect with us no matter how far apart we are on this earth. May the Holy Spirit flow through us and may we all bring a great fellowship, iron sharpen iron, and we all increase in your glorious name together. Amen. Uh, also, Lord, for anybody who's watching this pre-recorded, whether they're watching it a second time, a third time, or watching it just at a later date, be with them, Lord. Open their hearts, open their minds, open their eyes. May they see you and only you through this series. May they learn about you, but more importantly, may they grow hunger, grow, grow even more hungry and more thirsty for you to learn about you, to be in more relationship with you, and to want to be your servant and to give their life to you. For I testify, Lord, that it is the greatest life that a human being can have. In your holy, precious name, we thank you for today. And we ask that you bless this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, guys. Amen, amen, amen. All right, we got some people saying amen with it. God's blessings all from Higgins Lake, Michigan. Juanita, nice to see you. It's so nice to see you, by the way. Your names, we see them, guys. And to see the same people showing up every week, it really blesses us. So we just want to seriously say thank you. And for those of you who are continually uh, participating, encourages us we talked about it today before the video finally worked so all right shall we get on into it do you want to get started let's do it all righty <clears throat> here we go all right we gotta let's start off with a general comment by karen del wait wait wait, wait 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 it's not working what i don't know it's not working what's not working the buttons oh i pressed the wrong one okay here we're gonna take two this is how we do it okay take two here we go okay now you can do it. it's working yeah now it worked. i just pressed okay. the wrong button okay uh, user error. User error. It was me. It was me. Yes. Most of the time, it's me. Can I read the comment now? Sure. Go. Okay. Karen Dell Cunningham. Hi, Nathan and Alex. This is my first time listening, and even though I have a lot of catching up to do, 
praying for your safety and protection in LA with regards. Oh, the, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much for the earthquakes. For the earthquakes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with regard to this reading, I was wondering about the strangers among them mentioned in both Deuteronomy and Joshua. Who were the aliens? Anybody. It could be anybody that came and just assimilated into their culture yeah. who, who uh, basically wanted to become Jewish. You could, and as long as it was male, uh, you just had to be circumcised and you were considered full-on Hebrew. So, yep. yeah. So, yeah. It's um, anybody. It's not, like a, it's not like one or two tribes. There were... There was a tribe, as we're learning, there was only one tribe, two tribes, that actually, when they went to go conquer them, they're like, nah, don't kill us, we'll be a part of your team. Uh, so they would have been, but they always defined them. But when it says strangers is the, the, the context of what you're talking about, it means like the people who were nomadic or just came and decided to be a part of them. Could be somebody that heard about them, because as you hear from every single community that they went to conquer, they're like, yeah, your God's famous of what you've done, especially with the Egypt thing and all that. You guys are got a, an amazing God, and we fear you. So it could be that somebody was wise enough to be like, "I'm getting out of here. I'm going with those Jewish people." Yeah. So anybody, anybody who was living with them, staying with them, working with them for them, uh, those those who weren't necessarily born into a Jewish family, right? Um, or Israel, uh, or weren't weren't the children of the promise, the Israelites. The, even the you know. We keep saying the word Jewish, but it really doesn't belong here yet. Not yet. It really doesn't belong. Right, so right. These are these are these are the nationality. These are the, yeah, the descendants of Israel. So Is here we go. Israel. Uh, Doreen Norgreen <clears throat> Anderson. Hi, I uh, have a few questions, but the first is everything okay for you guys with those big earthquakes in California that the California had or perhaps are still having? And then Jennifer Conley writes, praying for safety for all in the California earthquake. Thank you guys for your prayers and for your concerns. Yeah, we're okay. Uh, we're far enough away here in LA from the from the epicenter. We just not, get a little wiggle. Yeah, it's we, just a little wiggle. We get for to us. ride the wave. Yeah, it's not like a huge thing. You guys want to hear a funny story? True story? Should I tell them about the kid thing when I, I was a kid? I don't know the story. Oh, yes, you do. I told you yesterday. Oh, the surfing? Yeah. So when you grow up in California, right, like I'm freaked out by tornadoes. Like Nate and tornadoes, I'm just, I, they scare the bejeez out of me. I like, I just always fear that a tornado is literally going to land on my head and like suck me up like a vacuum. You know what I mean? Yeah. But earthquakes don't scare me at all. Like, I'm like nothing, right? When I was a kid, me and my brothers used to do a thing called surfing the earthquake. And what we would do is we'd run into like the living room or an open space and we would try to stand and like pretend we were surfing. That's how you know you're a local Californian. When an earthquake happens, you're like, let's make a game of it, yay. So that was a little story. Okay, sorry, continuing on. That was great. No, Thanks. I thought it was fun. It was good times. I don't do that anymore, by I, the way. I'm, I'm scared. I jump out of bed and I run out only because I have work to do for the Lord. So Yeah, we can't lose you on surfing the earthquake. Uh, Could be fun. Yeah, I fear tornadoes too. You do? I do. They're, they seem kind of like less forgiving than an earthquake. And the and, and like an earthquake, yeah, I don't know. And they okay. rip apart your house like every single time. Yeah. There's nobody who's like, oh, my house got hit by a tornado. And like, everything is fine. Right. People get hit by earthquakes all the time and everything is fine. Exactly. Anyways, okay. this isn't, isn't about earthquake study, but thank you guys very much for the love. We appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Um, prior chapters questions. Vice versa asks about Joshua 6.4. This confuses me if they walk six days around Jericho and also on the seventh. Does this mean that Israel skipped a Sabbath? Uh, I think it was on the Sabbath that they did the seventh day walk. Yeah. Um, so the answer would probably be yes, but God literally told them to do this. Yeah. Um, and I remember we talked about why it was this, this, this sort of ritual. Was it for the sake of some, some weird thing or was, was God showing grace upon Jericho and giving them an opportunity to surrender? Right. To get out of Dodge. To get out of Dodge and say, we're not going to resist you. Yeah. Um, the thing is... Yeshua says it later, so we're going to kind of skip ahead. But Yeshua, being Yahweh and flesh, you know, he said, Sabbath is for man, not man for Sabbath. Now, the man that went and picked up sticks that got, you know, killed for picking up sticks on Sabbath, there's a specific rules that God said don't do on Sabbath. Don't pick up the manna. Don't gather sticks and prepare for cooking and food. Do all that ahead of time so that way you could, you could just be with the Lord on the second day. I think during wartime, uh, God is also making it understandable that like if you're in wartime that like, you know, you obviously can't go to the people attacking you and be like, I'm sorry, I can't fight right now. I'm on Sabbath. 
So that might also be what the Lord is saying. Uh, he is, you know, their leader at this time. He is their king on earth at this time. So the thing is, is he's kind of still establishing the rules. So there's even more rules to come, by the way. The rules aren't done. So what's really interesting is on this comment that you're leaving, I would say continue to pay attention to the fact that, that there are days, and there is a holiday, by the way, that kind of seems to break the Sabbath too. Remember that? The eighth day? Yeah, I think it's the Feast of the Tents, the yeah. Tabernacles. Yeah, so there's, a, there's another one where they wait until the eighth day to basically have Sabbath. It's, it's kind of a weird thing. So there are a few times where uh, it's... Yeah. Oh, I thought you said something else. No. Uh, just, just grunting, making, making noises with my ah, face. Ah, ah. <laughs> so, yeah, there are a few times where the Lord seems to kind of manipulate or, or kind of affect Sabbath by His commandment. And that might be something for us to keep in mind as we continue to read forward. So, good comment. Rion Williams, um, Joshua 6, 8. When God told the Israelites to not plunder Jericho, but then later allowed them to take from Ai, do you think he was setting up a little controlled folly knowing that... I Achan's, Achan's sin would provide a testimony to the whole of Israel, reminding Israel that obedience is more important than understanding before they renewed the covenant and took on the rest of the kingdoms in the promised land. Amen. That's a good, that's a good point. Obedience is definitely more important than understanding. When can we ever understand the full knowledge and will of God? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Alex, maybe, but not, wow. not me. So. No, I wouldn't. You're I wouldn't. pretty smart, dude. No. Look at how big his head is. Look, put our heads together. Yes, I have okay. a large noggin. But his head is like twice the size of mine. Do you guys ever know that? It's mostly sawdust, though, bro. Yeah, but and listen, the Lord can use a rock. He can use can. sawdust. Okay. He can. By the way, we have a live comment here. It says, Jennifer Conley, what was the difference between the power objects? Rod for Moses and sword for Joshua. So here's what's really interesting and the reason why I'm really glad you asked this question. Remember too that a rod or a, or a staff is the equivalent of the word testimony. Remember that the um, that the staff of a man uh, or a shepherd or, or a leader in this case would have like their own custom hieroglyphs and they would have an image that represented a story. So when they passed the, the staff onto somebody, it would have their testimony etched into it. Um, and, and that is, there's actually a reference to the fact that the, the staff is called testimony uh, later when, when Aaron is, uh, his turns and, and blooms. The other thing is, is the sword uh, definitely plays a role in God's word. So a testimony is also God's word. A testimony is testifying of God's word. And the sword is symbolic of God's word because Later on, we obviously hear in the New Testament, it's, it separates bone and marrow. It's double-edged. It does two things at once. It protects and it also refines in a way. So it's, a, it's definitely uh, two different roles. And obviously Joshua is acting more militant than Moses ever did. Moses actually never really, he himself never was militant. He stood on the mountain when they fought, raised his hands, and then they were winning the battle. So he's kind of almost like a spiritual cheerleader and power object himself, whereas Joshua is like leading the pack going on in there. Yeah. So good good note there that you pointed out. Okay. Okay. Uh, what? Do you went blank? You think of something else or did no, I miss something? No, no. I was I was considering the significance the, the different the differences between Joshua and Moses and how they approach a battle. I hadn't thought about that, so. I was just checking to see if I remembered where it would specifically say about Joshua rushing in or not, but I think it did, and I think you're right. I think that's interesting. Mm. Uh, Rhea, yeah, because he was there hiding with the guys. Yeah, he was very active. Yeah, he, he was, wasn't. He wasn't like he was quite a bit younger than than Moses, I think, when he started the mm. the warlike stuff. He was still old though, so he's still, he's still like old. a generally. Yeah, he was like sixty. I made a new word again. Generally, he was a general type character. Hello, I'm very generally. Joshua 7. Joshua 7. 7, uh, seven 1. Brian Williams, Joshua 7, 1. The Israelites acted unfaithfully in regard to devoted things. Here it is again. One person's act having consequences for all. Adam's sin had consequences for all humanity. Rahab's act of faith covering her whole family. Achan's sin being accounted to the whole of Israel. Why was Israel cleared of Achan's sin, but his family was not? Was I, what was it maybe? Was was it because Israel showed repentance when convicted, but Achan did not? 
and thus those under his, his authority were still subject to the consequences. Well, we, we wondered the same thing or similar things, and it seems that in order for Akon to have tried to get away with this, he, he made a he dug a hole in his tent. In his tent, yeah. And a tent is where your whole family hangs out. Yeah. So it, it is unlikely that they were all out to lunch somewhere <laughs> or visiting a relative while he did this. Yeah. And then they come back and they're like, mm, that's a fresh little patch of dirt right in the middle of somewhere. Yeah. You know. So Point is, is that the Bible says if you see somebody sinning and you don't say anything about it, you are equally responsible for the sin. Yeah. So since it was in his tent and they dug it in the tent and hid it there, that means technically the whole family would know. So because none of them said anything, even yes, ratting out your father, your daughter, your son, you're supposed to do that biblically, they did not. And so they all were held accountable for the sin. Right. And also, um, he's the head of the household and his, his children and all of his livestock and I suppose his wives are kind of considered his household, his possession. Mm -hmm. He's responsible for them. So um, somebody else in Akon's, Akon's position could be like, well, I'm going to risk my life and try to steal these gold uh, for my family's sake. And if they catch me and they kill me, oh, well. So the, you know, the barrier to committing the sin again, the bar is low. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the punishment is not as severe as it is in the case of here where everybody got to see what happens to, every, to his whole family. So w what's being done here is you don't just lose your life or, or the gold you stole. You actually lose everything that you stole the gold for. Because he implicated them by having them involved. Yeah. If he had built it, maybe if he had buried it out in the, in the wilderness where nobody saw him and nobody could be a part of the sin, he might have saved his family's life. Yeah. I mean, I could also see it being as something where, you know, why does this happen in Israel like this? I think Israel was supposed to be a, a big giant family. Everybody was brother and sister, like kind of literally. Everybody was cousins. They all came from the same one guy, Jacob. Right. So technically, everybody was rel relative. So if you steal from your brother and sister, uh, or if you steal from your king, which is God, um, I mean, it's a big deal. So Bad times. <clears throat> he stole, obviously, for his immediate family's sake. And the punishment from all of Israel was that not only he goes, but his entire family is destroyed. And this is, whoa, whoa, bad, bad. Don't ever do this again. Because but God gets, specifically told him on this particular instance, leave that stuff. Like it wasn't yeah. just a thing that was a general. He said specifically, this stuff, don't touch. Yeah. And so they did. Right. And 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 what, what, what were the consequences when Achan did that? He put the entire country the, or the entire nation in peril. Right. God could no, God could no longer move with them he because they broke, they broke a law. Yeah. Uh, real quick before we, we lose it. Marianne Mestone, I didn't enjoy reading these six chapters. So much killing. Probably these nations were evil and wicked. Not probably. They definitely were. They were. Uh, th we do. We noted this as we were reading too that it stopped going over the sins like it did Sodom and Gomorrah where it broke down the sins. It broke down how it was affecting the surrounding nations and the surrounding culture. He doesn't do that anymore. But when you notice when they first started moving into this, he said to them, you are not getting this land because you are holy. You're getting this land because these people who you're going to be taking the land from are so horrifically evil. So he does say that and then it kind of he just says it once and he feels like I guess he never has to really write it in the books again. So there is that sentence before they started moving into Israel or taking this land. He told them, listen, don't get a big head. You're right. not getting this because you guys are so great. Okay, you're yeah. not great. That's why I'm killing all your generations, except for two of you, from Egypt. Everybody else is brand new generation moving into this because you guys aren't perfect either. So don't get a big head about this. And then he says, these guys are evil. So very good, good comment. It is. This is one of those chapters, by the way, that non-believers in the Bible or haters of the Bible love to quote. And they're like, see, this is just like a Muslim where it just says, oh, if, 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 if it's not for you, if it's not your blessing, then you just go and annihilate an entire race of people. Uh, it's not the same. It, it's really not. I've read the Quran. They're very different. The people here were possibly, I mean, they were putting their children in fires to, to make their life better. They were 
uh, definitely worshiping other gods in blood sacrifice and drinking blood, and they were doing all sorts of crazy things, witchcraft, uh, shamanism, you know, all that kind of stuff. Among them lived literal genetic giants. Right. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. So we don't know what those people were doing in order to even get that big. Right. So it's, it's, it is important to take a look at all the chapters leading up to Joshua, especially Joshua 6, 7 through 12. It's important to see everything because God was unbelievably patient. He was unbelievably like uh, loving and he continually, like already more times than I can count, he, he gave them a chance to get right with him and to be right. And remember too, if you were right with God, he made it that you never had to fight. You didn't even have to grow food. You didn't have to even reap crops. Your food would never even go bad. You could have a bucket of apples that would stick around for three years in some cases. They would never, worms would never eat them. Like, I mean, he could not bless you more in that time period. And this is what he wanted to do for everybody. But people were like, no, I want to worship the God I want to worship. And, uh, and because of that, he wasn't able to bless everybody. So he was trying to make it so that he could bless every soul on earth. So that's why he was getting rid of these people. It's a very different scenario than what is often taught about these chapters, where God is just this giant kid with a magnifying glass. We're a bunch of ants. And he's like, no, nah, I don't like the way those ones look. Smite. Like it's, and that's just not the case. So yeah, I mean, I I'm think off also soapbox. No, I like the soapbox. I think also about this. What's more, more uh, viscerally uncomfortable than, let's say, the flood. The flood is exactly the same thing. Yeah. So these nations that are being eradicated by the Israelites are experiencing a kind of flood. Yeah. Where the Israelites are the the, the weapon for their destruction. But it's still exactly like the flood in the sense that everything is destroyed and everybody's, you know, everybody dies. And certain animal, every animal is killed except for specific ones that he says, these from this group you can you take. You can take. But this group kill yeah. everything. So, uh, but we, nobody really has a visceral, you know, reaction to the flood so much because people are kind of like, it's sort of like almost a myth and people don't have the, they can't imagine something like that. But because we've... We can certainly imagine human warfare and, and butchery and all kinds of stuff that happened in the medieval times, etc. This is more confronting and more difficult. So, but it's, you know, the nations that are being obliterated, like Nathan said, like we just pointed out, they could have been having in their minds evil continually, just like the pre-flood people. And um, if we want to understand more specifically what that is, it's not being t it's not being given, it's not being enumerated, probably for a good reason. Yeah, people tend to imitate that which they see or read about. Well, they're doing it now. The, the Israelites, the, the the young people, they're doing it. They're taking the idols and they're taking the 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 images. And by doing so, if I go into a culture and I take their idols, think about this, right? Their statues of, you know, let's say uh, Baphomet, Baal. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know, Mel Melchizedek or M Malik, right? All these kind of things. If I take these images raw and I bring them into, into my camp and I protect them, that means that some kid somewhere, I know me, if you know my story, I was a very curious kid. I wanted to know the truth of everything. I didn't ever believe my parents because once your parent lies to you once, you're like, yeah, now I can't believe you on anything. What else you lying to me about? So think about a child who, who comes across a, 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 a something that your father or mother are secretly protecting and they find it very valuable they tell you don't touch it you can never go into this box never open this box this box is super important you never ever touch this box now all of a sudden I'm thinking this is the most important thing to my father and if I go and I open it like kids would do they'll find a way to open it they look at it and they see that it's this image of another god or a deity they're gonna think that that the father has some secret and some kind of special relationship that nobody else has and they're gonna to want to do it as well. And now the image is going to have a story to it and boom, it starts all over. So yeah, it's a huge thing that when these things, again, an image comes, a picture's worth a thousand words, same thing with a statue, same thing with a trinket. It's worth a thousand stories. It's worth a thousand ideas of how it can interact or, or be a part of your life and, and therefore be a temptation for anybody to fall down the rabbit hole. And we've already seen throughout this entire story so far, there's always somebody, it's, it's heartbreaking. It really is heartbreaking because you feel bad for them because they have it so good. But, you know, curiosity killed the cat. I mean, 
they they get this itch and they they remember if you remember too up until this point they remembered the other gods of the other cultures whether it was egypt or ones they knew in relationship with they remembered these other gods and then they they recreated them there in the desert they brought those other deities into the desert with them it's like it doesn't even make any sense but it's because humans just have a tendency to do that and I, that's why he had to completely annihilate everything. He couldn't have the story perpetuate, and it always will. You can't keep a, a trinket. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Uh, yeah. Jessica Lai is saying, isn't there a passage which told previously about the sins of the people <clears throat> not being ripe yet before the time when the Israelite came in? That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. There's a passage that prophesizes what's going to happen to the Canaanites around Abraham's time, I believe, or somewhere around that time in the, sto in the timeline of, of, of the earlier chapters. And it is prophesied that the Canaanites have to go their full. They have to go. Right. They have to go all the way with their sinning before he can smite them. He's going to bring justice. But it all, you know, this is a difficult chapter. Is that a mic drop? I. Is that, is yeah, that it is a mic drop. Is a I think Jessica that's nailed good. Fine, because that's important to note. Thank you very much, there, yes. Jessica Law. Um, uh, Law. You know, it's. Oh, I broke my broke my I'm train sorry. Of thought. I had to sing. No, no, that's all right. It's all right. We'll get back to my train of thought later. But. Um, uh, there's another point about this. Yes. Oh, uh, Amy Salz Salzbrun is asking. Salzbrun. Salzbrun was asking, were some of them Nephilim too? I thought that was part of why he wiped so many out. Yes. Um, I don't know. I don't. I can't say that they're Nephilim because they're using a oh. different Hebrew word. Right. Uh, at, at these chapters, but they did use Nephilim in um, was it Deuteronomy or when numbers? They numbers. Them? Numbers. Yeah. They use Nephilim in numbers in reference to some of these people. So either way, we do know that they are, there was large people here, gi ginormous people that they um, did accuse of being remnants of the, of Nephilim, the Nephilim species. Yes. Yeah, and you know, if, if let's let's imagine for a second, there's these ten foot tall super warriors running around. They are definitely the kings of the earth. Nobody's going to mess with them. Yeah, there's no guns them. at this point. There's, I mean, if you get into a fist of cuffs with that guy, you're done. Brute force is Brute king. Brute force is king. Yeah. Um, and everybody within their tribe is going to treat them like a king or almost a god or and a listen superhero. to them. Now, what that creates is a bunch of strong men. So there's a bunch of strong men running tribes and cities and villages, right? Nowhere in there is there a law. Nowhere in there is a law above these strong men. So these kings are these strong men that run these places are already making the first or one of the one of the main sins of which God warns Noah about. Remember? Anyway, I'm going back a little bit. But mm -hmm. uh, Noah is told that he has to have a code of laws, essentially. Right. It's a commandment. But it's a commandment. So what we have here is a bunch of strong men deciding what laws they're going to have and what laws they won't have. Right. They get to decide. There is no fair you know, God-given law in any any way, shape, or form. That alone in itself could be so evil already. Yeah, because you can can't... force the people to do evil things whether they like it or whether not. Whether they like it or not. Yeah. Or, or, or why do you do these things? Well, because Sam the giant said to do it, and if I don't do it, he's going to slam my head in. Right. That's it. That was all that ever needed. So these guys become essentially Elohim. They become lords. They become gods on the earth. You... And they behave accordingly. And so... At that point, that society becomes untouchable. You can't reason with them. You can't be like, hey, listen, by the way, uh, you know, we got these laws. We got this really cool God you can't see. And uh, we got these awesome laws. He did amazing miracles that, you know, he may do for you, maybe not. And uh, you just got it. You can't do this anymore. You, 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 you can't cheat in your wife anymore. You, you can't murder people. You can't make these laws where you're like super king. You have to kind of like, you know, Serve the realize people. that he's the king. And, and you have to submit and surrender to his will. How many of those super giants are going to be like, yeah, sure, no problem? That sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah. I'll get off the throne. Yeah. You priest people take over stuff. We're good to yeah. go. I'm going to go release the harem and the slaves and let's let's party. Yeah. Uh, Ellen Mahar. Is it worth our while to read Joshua? I'm going to... I have a very quick answer to this. I believe... I believe that knowledge is important. I believe that if you read any of the external books outside of the Bible, the, the non-canon you know, books that people accuse of being taken out of the Bible, it was never taken out, it was just never included in. Um, 
I believe that it's important to read them, but I believe that you should read them with a grain of salt. In my opinion, every single one of them gets to a sentence or a point where it may not exactly match up with the Bible. So you have to make a decision. Do you want to believe the entire thing and just kind of think that that and the Bible maybe just don't agree and they're both the truth? But then you, you always have to get to a point where you have to believe one. And I myself always believe the Bible. I, I do believe from reading both the canon and non-canon that there is truth definitely in the non-canon scriptures, but because you, you don't know what part is fully true because it doesn't perfectly match the Bible, you have to wonder what part was manipulated. So that's why I say read it, but read it with you know a grain of salt because it's it, 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 you will have a conflict. There will be some kind of mental conflict when reading these things, but I believe you should read them so that you're at least knowledgeable about their context so that you can speak upon it if somebody else who's a non-believer has read them and then therefore does not believe the Bible because of them. So that would help your evangelism. That's the first and foremost reason I say read them so that you can at least be knowledgeable on them and how they don't match up. Anyways, that's that's my two cents. I think it's a, an important question. We get asked that a lot, yeah. rightfully so. And especially as you guys are continuing to dig and do research to, to make sense of the Bible or to give yourself a full mind about what you're reading in the Bible, it's good to see that you guys are starting to look into these books and starting to wonder about them. Uh, and that's my two cents on that. So, Yeah, uh, a lot of these books seem to exist in order to deal with rabbit holes. Mm -hmm. They exist in order to fill big gaps in, or what we perceive as maybe big gaps in the story. But I know early on when I first started to read the Bible, I wanted to know every single detail. So when I would hit a gap and then I would find out that it exists, that some information about that existed in it. Would you stop shaking the table? When I hit a gap and found out that some information on that gap existed in a non-canon book, I would immediately jump to the non-canon book before I read the rest of the Bible. And I would find myself in a deep rabbit hole. I remember having a one and a half hour conversation with this man on the phone where I jumped into a hoop that was wow out there and uh, thank God I had him to call and talk about it where he was he could bring me back from the hoop and bring me back from the hole and kind of be like can you maybe you know not but I didn't just tell you you're wrong right. so just just so anybody's like it wasn't like he made a phone call yeah, to me it's just like Nate is this right and I was like that's wrong and because he's just like okay thanks yeah because there's all these extracurricular details in there I made a weird kind of maybe I don't want to say decision, but like a weird uh, conclusion Conclusion about my own spiritual self or something or my own origins that were just like, wow, dude, well, you jumped into that one really crazy, really quick. And so they're very tempting. They're tempting. Yeah. And, they, and they answer the questions that are the most commonly asked, you know, like some of them do for sure. Yeah. It, and so it, it is it's nice to believe that they're telling the truth because it just fills holes and it makes you be like, ah, okay, I can move forward now. I think, I, the, again, the, the reason why I just wanna emphasize, because you, you are saying this as well, but the reason why I wanna emphasize this, ladies and gentlemen, is you can, only, you can only trust that Nathan Wheeler is giving you good advice. I mean, anybody could tell you all sorts of different things. I know there's people that have actually commented and said differently. There's people who say, oh, these non-canon books do match. You're wrong, Nate. Me and Alex have actually had private conversations with them for hours on end being like, listen, it's pretty clear. They don't match. And we show them the side-by-side -side scripture. Um, if you read the entire Bible, and, and, and I know we said this, and we're probably going to say it again, and it's okay. I don't mind saying this at all because it's the whole reason we're doing the entire Bible read through. The Bible is a living, breathing word of God. It's written on a page, but as soon as you read it out loud, you speak it, you give it breath. The Bible actually tells us to read the word of God out loud, by the way. The Bible also tells us to, to pray out loud, by the way. There is power in vibration of sound. There's power in speaking out loud. When you read the Bible, it also is written on your heart. That's what the Bible itself says. It says you write the Word of God on your heart. Nobody can ever take the Bible from your heart once you've read those words. It moves in you. It speaks in you. And, the, and, and, the, and God, God grows you. He, he, it's like I said when we first started this. It's like a key. And the Bible opens every single person in their own unique way at their own unique time. And... The reason why I'm emphasizing this is to point out that if you read the entire Bible, which is what we're doing, you will clearly see it has a point. 
a very fine razor edge point. God intended for us to have a particular knowledge and a particular awakening in a very particular mm, aspect of life regarding relationship with Him. That's what the Bible accomplishes. The moment you've achieved that by reading the Bible, you see that and you see how clear it is. When The moment you read the external books, which Alex has already noticed once I kind of pointed out to him, they don't point to that razor edge. They're kind of fluff. And that is almost a red flag to somebody who's totally read the Bible. Because if it doesn't point to the same purpose, you have to wonder, then what is the purpose of this particular book? If it's not that purpose, which the entire Bible points towards, why is this one kind of giving another direction or another purpose? So I, I know I'm being vague, but it's because I don't want to just give it away. Sometimes it doesn't give a, another purpose or any purpose. That's what I'm saying. It just creates these, it just feeds your curiosity. If, it's, it's what you're saying. Yeah. It feeds your curiosity and it, it doesn't apply to you spiritually. There's nothing to be, there, whatever. There, yeah. Brian, we're, we're, Brian Menning is saying it perfectly. Pray and ask for discernment and he will give it to you. The word and prayer to ensure is, it, it, it is right. Yes. Bam. Okay, Carlos, books were taken out by Constantine. No, that's not correct, Carlos. There were no books. There, the Bible wasn't written as a book, and I, and, I, I know, and I know what you're saying, but being one degree off from the truth makes you a mile off the truth a mile down the road. So the, the book that Constantine put together, there was two books, actually. The book he put together that we all know today as the Bible is the canon, which is a collection of scrolls. Uh, the only book that actually was intended by God to be a book was the Torah. That was intended to be the book. It is the book that gives the foundation to the nation of Israel how to be a nation for God. That's the only part of the Bible that God himself said, this is the book of me. All of the other parts are scrolls that got kind of compilated together. And in the Jewish culture, there's different levels and different compilations. You can actually Google it and you'll see the, 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 the prophets are one, the kings are another. There's all sorts of compilations of things. Even Psalms is not written by one person. That's a compilation. Uh, Proverbs is not one person. It's a compilation again. So you, you, it, it, it is important to understand the truth in this particular vernacular. And when you say something along the lines of, Constantine took took scriptures or took took books out of the Bible. That means that the Bible itself is not the complete works that God intended. It means that there was something else that God intended, and a human being came and divided those words from that word of God. That's not what happened. There was a whole bunch of scrolls, letters that people wrote to each other, and a group of men got together and they put together a, a collection of these letters and put them together in order to make what we now call the Bible. What's in that collection is the collection we have today in the King James. So uh, just Actually, just wanted to be very, very clear on that. So what we have in the King James, just to be even more specific, yes. what we have in the King James is uh, about a 9th or 10th century collection of, translation of a 9th or 10th century Hebrew collection made by rabbis mm -hmm. uh, of uh, all of the Jewish scrolls that they considered our canon. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you have the New Testament, which is basically either the Vulgate or, or Greek or Eastern Orthodox Church that was translated from Greek into the King James English. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at now. And Constantine... Uh, what well, we're look the, the stuff that Constantine or that the Catholic Church early on or, or Constantine or anybody at that time the stuff that they had probably wasn't even in one volume called the Bible which is what no. you're getting at yeah um, and it was never given to the people to read no they had you know they, they would go to church and they would receive or they would go to you know uh, cathedral whatever and they would receive from the pastors or uh, the deacons and the priests they would receive knowledge from them who would occasionally, I suppose, read from the scrolls or, or interpret from the scrolls. But the people never held any scrolls in their hand uh, unless they were part of the church, maybe, part yeah. of the clergy. So yeah. it's a big... It's, what we have today, especially now with Esword, all compiled for us. And translated for Translated for us. For us uh, unbelievable. Codified for us so we can look at the original word. We can use the internet to go find other sources. We can find out... 
Uh, we can look at uh, extra biblical books like people are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, nobody had that back then, and this is mind-blowingly powerful. It is. This is why I think we are as blessed, blessed as we are doing this exercise together. Yeah. We're probably, you know, getting to see things uh, like nobody ever has in the, in, in the history of, uh, unless you were like a, you know, a biblical scholar and your life was devoted and you had a library access to all these sources. Yeah, you, you had full access to every scroll. Yeah. Then you were, you were super high ranked and blessed. Not the general public. They couldn't even have the Bible themselves. That's what King James is famous for. Yeah. Kim and Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, the other Martin Luther, they, they decided to steal the scrolls and make a Bible that was mass duplicated so everybody could read it for themselves. That's what those guys did. And before that point, you were actually told you're not allowed to read the Bible because you would not understand it. They literally tell you. The, the catechism says this. You cannot understand the Bible if you just read it for yourself. You need a priest to, to tell you what it means. That's in the catechism. So yeah, there, there, everything changed. Uh, there was a total reformation with King James and, uh, and Martin Luther. Real quick, there's a passage. There's, two, there's a couple comments here. Uh, Ronica Marie, man fails, the Holy Spirit brings us to all truth. Amen. Could not agree more. Deborah Tepper, with God's discernment, I am sure right that they considered. Yes, I, I personally can testify that these men must, God must have had his hand on the choices of these scrolls. Because when you read the entire Bible and then you read the scrolls that, that were there, but they were not added, you can see there is a very, very clear point that all the scrolls, all the, all the yeah, scrolls in the Bible point towards. And all the ones outside that didn't make it in, they don't point towards that. So that's what I'm saying. It's when you read the whole Bible, you folks will be able to clearly see that it is like one voice. It's so, I don't want to use the word creepy, but it, it's like, it is. It's, it's in a good way, kind of like creepy, like how absolutely perfect it is. There's no possible way that, that it's pure coincidence that every single scroll written by all these different people, every single passage written by all these different people, all tie in and point to the exact same spot in the end. It's it's impossible, it's unbelievable. So anyways, I, I just have to testify. It, it ha God's hand 100% is on the Bible. It, I believe it 100%, so yeah. I know, I know for those of you who are reading it for the first time, watching these video series and reading with us, you're going to experience the exact same understanding when you get to the end, because it's, it's just like that. It's, it's, not, it's not a thing that's like Nathan's opinion. You'll see. If it's not already happening to you by this time. Deborah Tepper, too many translations. I totally agree. That's why I always tell people, download eSword, read it, for, read it in the original with the, uh, the Strong's Concordance. Okay. Marion Meston agrees. You're right, Nathan. Catholics were not allowed to read the scriptures in the past. Nope. Okay. So, okay. So let's continue. Yes. Um, Lori Gelwick Tudor, uh, Joshua 7 1. But the children of Israel uh, committed a trespass regarding the accursed things. Right. I knew they did something they were told not to do. And all I could say was, why? Not again, people. <laughs> yeah. Then they stoned them and burned everything because everything was now unclean. Joshua 7, 6, uh, Joshua tore his clothes and fell on the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening he and the elders of Israel put dust on their heads. Why put dust on their heads? Hmm. That is a good question. There's actually no full explanation why they do it, but I think... It, they've been doing it for a while. They've been doing it for yeah. since... Since like Jacob Noah. or like at least since Abraham yeah. or something like that. Like it's an old thing. Yeah. I, I think it's a sign of humility. Yeah. And I think it's a way to also acknowledge that they came from dust. I think it, yeah. I think it's a way to acknowledge that man is dust compared to the Lord. We are nothing. And I think that by the other thing is, remember, a, a man's head is his glory. It's, it's his. Uh, he, he humbles himself before the Lord by bowing his head. And so to put dust on his head is a way to say, Lord, I am nothing but dust. I, I, this is what I am. And I think it's just a humility. The ripping of clothes, again... Think about how long it took them to make the clothes. <laughs> right. So if you rip your clothes back then, it's not like you're like, all right, I'm going down to Macy's and picking up another shirt. Like you or whoever whoever made your clothes is probably sitting there being like, Oy vey, you know how long it took me to make that, Yosef? 
my goodness gracious, it's gonna take me like five years to make you a new tunic, you know? It's like craziness, so. I love your, your accent, like, it's kind of It's Irish. all over there, it's I know. A, it's, it's everywhere. Me. I always want to go to Yosef. the Irish. This is Yosef, go to get Yosef. your own tunic. Stop ripping the clothes I give you, would you? What's wrong with you? <laughs> All right, sorry guys. Oh, Yosef. I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my Jewish accent down pat. You'll see. I'm gonna work on it for you guys. <laughs> Yosef, what it's are you doing? It's just gonna end up being Yiddish. Yeah, see, it's Yiddish what are you is doing, easy. Yosef, you rip your clothes. I take me four hours to make it for you. I make it four hours for you to make this. I'm gonna make up a muffin. Oh, what is this? What? We're Italian, Italian now. Man. He's Italian. Hey, hey. they want an Italian. Forget, forget about it. Forget about it. it. Okay, All right. continue. Where? Are um, we? Lori? Or yeah. Lori? So Lori, I hope. <laughs> I hope <laughs> I hope, I hope we answer that question without being complete fools. Um, yes. It seems like you would. It, it is an act of humbling oneself. Yes. Um, uh, Rianne Williams, Joshua 7. I find the story of Akon really convicting. It is really easy to look at him and say, God literally provided everything he needed in the desert, stopped a river, destroyed a whole city wall, gave you victory, and promised you an inheritance of incredible provision. And yet, your actions show that you don't believe God can or will provide for you that you have a right to disregard his rules and that you expect to get away with it. Here's the kicker. I know that I'm no different from him. Mm. My life shows the same attitude as Akon, but I pray that like Joshua, I come before God with a heart of repentance and move forward in obedience. Wow, Rian, that is a mic drop. That is a mic drop of mic drops. Yeah. I feel convicted just reading that, that, that message from you. Yeah. Amen. That was good. I, I can agree 100%. I had so many things that the Lord has done in my life that like for me to sit here and be like, I just don't know if the Lord's going to be with me on this. I am so dumb. I do that continually. I am so dumb. I do that continually. Because what is wrong with my faith? Well, <laughs> and we are super blessed to live like post cross to have this unbelievable grace upon us. It yeah. doesn't mean that we're like, you know, off the hook of it. It just means that we're just not being stoned to death. for it. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I would have been stoned to death a thousand times over. I studied and practiced and had every kind of trinket image in my freaking room for like 20 years. Bad stuff. Can you imagine? I know. It's on you now, bro. It's ah! on you now. By association. No, you have been cleansed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm not hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're a new creation, my brother. Hallelujah. All right. Okay. Yeah, very good. Very good post there. Right Great now. post. Um, all right. Great comments, you guys, both lifetime and, of course, in preparation. Amen. Uh, this is awesome. 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 Um, you got one there? No. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Moving on. Um, vice versa, Joshua 7, 6. Tearing his clothes and falling on his face and putting dust on your head shows me if you humble yourself that God will acknowledge that you have. I don't see many people doing the, this these days, me included. Wait, wait, we lost connection. Uh oh. If you guys can still hear us, just give us one second. Just give us Well, we have to give a new second. secure Earl? No. Please check your stream. Well, oh, our stream went red. We lost connection. They're 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 showing their hands out. They're 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 showing that they can see it or hear us. Um, can you guys hear or see us? My internet says it's good. Man, the devil must really hate us. Yeah, we're must have. We we're must down to seventeen people too. That must yeah, we lost something. Oh, they're logging back on. Did we lose it? I think we lost. Well, it. we're on red. I think we lost it. I've lost the video several times. Anyone else? What about Gospel of Thomas? I'll speak to that. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yes. Oh, we're back. That was my choir voice, by the way, you guys. If you guys need choir music, you can get that here too. Yes, thank you guys. Um, what about the Gospel of Thomas? Deborah, any book that's not in the Bible, that's my stance on it. Any book that's not in the Bible. There is no exception to any of them for me. Just a personal a personal story mm -hmm. uh, or a personal opinion, completely take it as a personal opinion. I love some of the extra biblical gospels. I think I may have read Gospel of Thomas. I've read some other ones that are fascinating. Some of them really opened my eyes to certain things and I and I, I don't speak, you know, I, I don't want to say 
There's also some parts of them that I went, huh? Wait, what? We're red again. Are we guys, red again? If, Are you guys seeing if, it? You guys, if, if we get lost, we have an internet connection thing. Rat ate my internet wire. So literally, literally, like literally that happened. Yeah, we had so to fix that it was one that. of the reasons why we were late today. A rat bit through my internet wire. So yeah, we're done. Dang it. We're back to green. I know. Okay. So what I'm saying, they can't see. We're not. Are we moving? Or I don't think we're even moving. Man, that thing's not eating it again, is it? Was it pinned to the top? Yeah, it's pinned to the top now, but man. All right. Oh, no, lost again. Yeah, just bear with us. Hopefully, it'll come back on. We, we're green. I have no idea what to it, do. It says kilobit zero. Here? Or here? No, over here. Even though it's green. I know. I, I, I could make it two videos, I guess, off again. Oh, no. Go away, Satan. Satan. Yes, Tina. I would like your comment. Um, Buffering. It's not you guys, by the way. It's us. It's us. It's us. Reconnection successful. Woo, woo, woo. The screen has frozen. Lost again. Didn't we pray for this? Didn't we pray against this? Didn't I, I ask you to pray? Where's your supernatural prayer powers? Man, like, that's just your opinion. Can I have some of your muffin? No. I'm hungry. Well, you should have thought about that. Mm, well, we're, we're, they can't see us anyway. They can see us. We're recording this. So when we post it, it will be like this. Oh, great. And you can have the rest. There's nothing left. Yes, there is. Oh. I split in half. Mm. Whoever is watching this recorded, yeah. um, I welcome. hope you're enjoying this uh, intermission. Mm -hmm. Are we? Maybe it's time for you to grab a snack, too. Mm -hmm. This might be a little loud. Mmm, banana nut bread. It's really good. That's pretty good. I used to believe that banana nut bread was healthy because it was made with bananas. Huh. I, I mean, Yahweh doesn't want us to talk about extra biblical stuff. It cuts us. <laughs> That's a true statement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can see you. What kind of muffin? I'm hungry. What kind of muffin is this? Banana nut bread. That's what I just said. Banana nut bread? Mm hmm. It's pretty is good. Is it good? Mm -hmm. It's better than the blueberry, actually. I can finish it? Yeah, you can have it. Really? I'm very giving to that. You're so kind. Fried green tomatoes are awesome. A little salt and pepper. Are we back? We can't see us, so if we're back, we're back. Let's keep going. All right, Alex Lavosky, yeah. get to reading, quick. We're back, but we can't see that we're back. But yeah, we, we can't we can see tell us. that we're back. So, so we're, we're just going reading. to, we're going we're going blind here, people. We can't see us of what you're seeing us, so. Okay. You are what you eat? Great. I'm banana nutty. I'm both banana. Bananas, we're bananas. We're banana nut breads, okay. Okay. We're back. Um, is on the Pringles? Okay. Uh, okay. okay, let's go. Quick, look, before we lose All right. the game. Uh, vice versa. Uh, oh, yes. Um, uh, let me just reread that. Tearing his clothes, falling on his face, and putting dust on your head shows me that you've humbled yourself, that God will acknowledge that you have. Mm -hmm. I don't see many people doing this these days, me included, when they sin against God. But then again, Joshua and Israel had God with them. And they must have had a great, greater righteous fear of God than many Christians today. This is a true statement. <clears throat> yeah. It's one of the best, it's weird to say, I don't want to say best, but one of the strongest things that I've got to experience in this Bible read through so far is getting a taste of the fear of the Lord. Yeah. We, we spoke about this at length in other videos. We recommend you guys go check those out. If you mm -hmm. haven't for some reason, if you're, if you're jumping around, do see that there. <laughs> The fear of the Lord has been the greatest blessing. It's changed me quicker. Well, no. Getting the Holy Ghost. Probably. No. The fear of the Lord changed me, like, I would say dramatically quicker than anything else I've ever had. Yeah. I I, am, I haven't changed. My fear of the Lord is, like, still here every yeah. day. Yeah. It doesn't go away. Yeah, it's a pretty so, remarkable thing. So it's it's a blessing to have it. It, it is. It's a blessing to have it. because Super big blessing. Because of the nature of this world, it is so easy to slide into... Uh, lack of vigilance <laughs> it's so easy to slide into sin complacency uh, and complacency sin. yeah um that uh you know the fear uh, yeah my, myself included i got one time. word i got one word today i got complacency and you did good that's the perfect word i was looking Thank for it's the second time i actually helped you with a word really yeah the roles are really reversed today i know usually you're the brain i am operation. banana nut bread today Boom, ba -da -da. all right rian williams joshua 7 1 through 18. Ooh, that's a lot isn't it amazing how effective one man's sin was at stopping the whole of Israel, even Joshua, from inquiring after God and listening to him? 
When sin breaks the relationship, we do just careen off in our own directions and get really confused when it doesn't work out, don't we? Do you think Joshua's reaction of remorse over seeing the consequences of Israel's sin, even before he knew what the problem was, is why God stepped in to help them? Yeah. I love how matter-of-fact God's response was. What are you doing? Get up and deal with it. <laughs> yeah. The formula God gives for setting the relationship right again is so simple and sobering. Sin is the reason we can't stand against our enemy. It makes us liable to destruction. Yes. With a repentant heart, you can receive God's conviction about the sin, find it with his help, and remove it or the consequence is death. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit does just that. And I want to point something out on this really quick. First of all, I gave you mic drop because Rihanna is amazing. Amazing point. Two things I want to point out about this that I think is, is vital. When, when you would bring a particular animal to be sacrificed at the temple, everybody was at the temple. It wasn't like you showed up when nobody was there and you dropped off your animal. Which animal you dropped off would define what type of sin you created. It was a form of a public uh, uh, bringing out to light your sin. It was, a, it was a public display. Even the high priest must make his sin public. He had to sacrifice the, his own animal before he could even go in and be high priest. That means everybody saw what sin he committed by which animal he was sacrificing. So confessing your sins and bringing your own sins to light. Most of our sins, when we are either leaders or public uh, leaders or public officials or anything like that, most of our sins come back to bite us when we hide them. If we bring them to light, we take the power away from our enemies to use them against us and to harm ourselves. Also, it's a form, as you said, of humbling ourselves and saying, Lord, not only have I committed the sin, but I need to be back in relationship with you. I need your blessings back on me. And by, by performing that kind of outward expression of, of confession and acknowledgement of our sin, the Lord goes, great, that's what I needed. Boom, now I'm back with you again. And, and a lot of us miss that that is a part of the anoint or the atonement for these sins is the public display. <gasps> Ooh, are we back? Okay, is the public display. So we have very little internet. Again, sorry guys if the internet's acting up again. Hopefully you guys heard what I just said. I had a yeah, point, no, but I, it's obviously not important. Uh, I, I heard it all. I thought it was great. Fine. Uh, if, really you guys, if you guys are receiving any kind of uh, issues with the audio and video cutting out, please let us know. As we're nervous that we're... Yeah, it looks like we're in the red again. Yeah, we're paused. Yeah, we got to get a... How are we getting internet to see what they're writing but not broadcasting? That means it's on this thing. This thing is messing up. I don't know what's going on. Not the internet. I, I can't theorize. It was going just fine, and then now we, we've had we've had bad internet. Please repeat about in the, the area the for enemy. a while. Okay, we're gonna do this. Oh my God! Again, see, at least they're gonna believe that we're telling the truth about our internet issues. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody doesn't like uh, doesn't like what we're doing here today. Welcome to my world. So they can't see you, bro. I can't see you. You guys can't see us, right? Or maybe you can, because the last time you said you could see us eating the muffin. No, no cursing, Ricardo. <laughs> Satan, we rebuke you. Oh, now it's going to work. Look at this. Oh, no. Really? Okay. Write the comment. We can see you holding up your hand, Nathan, if you see me. So that way I know you're actually seeing me in real time. Oh, how far back is that? That is so weird. We may need to reboot this to do, do part A, part B. Hold on. It's now we're back in the green. Oh, look at that. It totally... It skipped forward. It skipped forward a big time. Okay. How... What was the last thing you guys heard me say? All right. Well, I'm going to be really quick because I think this is important. Really quick. On top of what Rihanna was saying, I was just wanted to point out that by depending on what animal you sacrifice, you were confessing to everybody there what sin you committed. That is also part of what we do to remove the power from the enemy. When we try to keep a sin a secret and we hold it back, 
Our enemy can use it against us, threaten it with us, point it out as though they discovered the sin, and so on and so forth. If we are the ones who bring our sin to light, <clears throat> this is beyond frustrating. Is he holding up your hand? Wow, this thing is so, so messed up. Do, do, do lags here. Okay. Let's reboot. Yeah, let's reboot. Okay. If you guys can see us, we're going to reboot. We love you very much. We will see you in. Heard you say you are back. All right. We will be right back, guys. Let's see if we can get this to work. Thank you. God bless you. Part two coming next.